Hey there, folks. Greg Shepard here, SNA Financial Services. For those of you that don't know me by now, I focus on and specialize in helping folks just like yourself. Those in higher education basically just get the most out of their retirement plan, higher ed retirement plan. So today's short video, I'm going to focus uh, and frame this video around, we'll call it investment management at or in retirement. Okay, kind of synonymous there. Um, the reason I'm doing this is I've seen, you know, I've been doing this a long, a long time, 21 years, and I've seen uh, recently um, folks in higher education have done a fantastic job of putting, you know, diligently throughout their career, 30, 40 years, putting money into 403B, 457, 401A, of course, that's mandatory, but doing a great job of accumulating those assets, okay? And folks probably more aggressive than they meant to be, which is fine. Okay. That got them to where they are currently, uh, presumably at retirement age. Right. So then they transition into retirement and some folks will roll the monies over to an IRA at some place. Okay. Whether it, they keep it with Tia or Fidelity or Schwab, Vanguard, whatever the case is. Okay. But they'll keep the same, um, mindset of high equity exposure, stock exposure. Okay. So imagine this, you're 67, 68, you retired, you keep that 80, 85% in equities that you've done throughout your career. Remember, you're putting money in, in your career. So you're essentially dollar cost averaging on your own through payroll deduction, it, like we, 2022, when the market went down, you were essentially buying things on sale. Now you've retired you transfer that money over, you keep that same uh, philosophy, investment philosophy, 80, 85% of stock market and 2022 happens again. You've got yourself a little bit of a problem, okay? Because you're not contributing to those monies anymore. Uh, just the opposite. You're starting the distribution phase, you're extracting. So what I see in my industry uh, more times than not is when you, on the investment management part, you figure out how much money you need from this portfolio. There's various ways of going to do that. It's it's old hat for me, I do it every day, determining how much money folks need or want from that portfolio. Then you implement an income slash interest slash dividend producing portfolio that isn't as exposed to the stock market that you once were. So in this case, hypothetically, you got an 80% um, exposure to the stock market, maybe you flip it to where it's 80% other things, investments that produce income or interest, okay, that's given, you may reinvest it, but it's eventually that those monies are distributed to you for you to enjoy, right? Uh, the days of you socking away money every month and being aggressive are over, okay? You're not in your accumulation phase anymore. You're in your de-accumulation, that's even a word. You're in a distribution phase. So you got to invest as such. Um, and this is very important. I see folks do this, not all the time, but more times than I should. And also think about this, you, during your accumulation phase, all right, um, you did a good job of socking money away and putting it into index funds, whatever the case is, maybe you're capable of picking those investments. Okay. If you're not, you default to a target date fund of sorts through Vanguard or TIA, whatever the case is. At retirement, it comes, becomes more complex. Okay. It's not just you going and buying an index investment you know, or, or a bond index investment for that, for that matter. There are so many different investments out there to choose from. I, of course I'm biased. I think it's um, advantageous for those to pay for those of you out there to pay someone in my industry, no more than 1%. Okay. No more than 1%, but 0.8, depending upon your assets, something like that to help you navigate or quarterback these, these man, You'll have various accounts, most folks, okay? Where's the most tax efficient way? How, what's the most tax efficient way to take these monies out from which account do you do this? Also, what are the best, um, in the eyes of you know the advisor, the best interest slash dividend producing investments out there to reach your goals, okay? There's obviously more investments than you had options you know, at Fidelity or, or uh, TIA in, in most cases, okay? You broaden that horizon when you roll those monies over to an IRA at retirement. So I think it's advantageous uh, to have someone to help you out for a small fee. Remember, you got to think to yourself, can that advisor, I know it's impossible to answer right now, can that, will 
will or can that advisor help me or, or do better than 0.8% than I would on my own? Did I say that correctly? I think you get what I'm saying. I think there's a lot of value. Of course, I'm biased, but I think there's a lot of value in that, especially at retirement or planning up to retirement, five, six, seven years away, something like that. All right, something to think about. But investment management part in or at retirement, um, you know, you're done with your accumulation phase. So for most people, I, I think the only folks that really need my opinion, not investment advice, folks, don't don't construe it as such. This is not investment advice. The only people that need to be aggressive near retirement or even at retirement are those folks, unfortunately, that didn't do a good job of accumulating the funds during their career. Most folks uh, out there have done it, such an excellent job. You have more than enough money for that, those accounts to outlive you if done properly and still maintain the same or even better uh, financial life you are living while you are working, okay? Hopefully you got the gist of that. Um, and I'll throw my contact information as I always do below. Feel free uh, to contact me on any questions you may have. All right, folks, that's it for today. Greg Shepard here, SNA Financial Services. Go out and have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.